Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the podcast where we get geeky, we talk tech. It's the Awesome Cast, uh, episode 243 for this April 7th, 2015. I think I said the wrong dates this morning on the mini shows. Oh, that's interesting. Anyways, with me, uh, out of Studio B, it is Chilla, John Chilla on the Twitters. Uh, how How's you doing? It? Pretty good, how are you? Your camera does look pretty sexy this week. It does look good. See, I, that's what I was thinking. It was looking better, but I couldn't. I, it's only giving me back. I'm guessing what. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you actually see on a Hangout the actual? Or is it just a reflection of what's going through your PC, and then it gets digitized by Google on the back end? Or do you, when you actually see yourself on Hangout, is it what what the actual quality of others are seeing? Um, I think that your quality on Hangout is better than what other people see. Okay. Absolutely. Because yeah, certainly. Because you're you're just seeing the feed from your camera directly. It's not doing a, a roll around thing. I don't think. So, um, and also with us, you heard him there momentarily. He's back off of his social media hiatus. We'll get into here at the top of the show. It's Will Rutherford of, of course, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and of of course the PanelRiot.com, dot uh, com, and of course of at DJ Lunchbox, and maybe some Sawtooth Willie. Possibly, possibly. Could be Sawtooth Willie. It could be another person who looks a lot like me uh, that we just found. That we just found. Awesome, awesome. I can't wait to talk to you about uh, uh, your return to everything. So, uh, if you guys want to get a hold of us, of course, we're at awesomecast.net. Um, and uh, you can also contact us uh, through uh, Twitter at awesomecast, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And you can find awesomecast on Facebook, Google, all this stuff, and converse with us. We're putting out stories throughout the week that we think are interesting going on. And, um, and of course, you can drop us a line. No, no, that's the thing we already said. You can join us live, live live.awesomecast.net. Around about 7 o'clock Eastern, we're trying to get started now. Uh, You can join us like like Wheels has, High Wheels, and I don't know if anybody else has popped in there. Um, And uh, what else is there? Oh, please subscribe to us. uh, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and you can be a patron. Become our boss of this show. And the guys are really enjoying it. The guys have uh, contributed to the Wrestling Mayhem show. Got a really great message from one of the guys uh, uh, today. Um, about what we're doing over there with some of the extra content and everything. And, uh, you know, if you want to support the show, if you think you get some value out of these conversations we're having, that's one way to do it. Hit the link over there at awesomecast.net and even you donate a dollar uh, an episode, you know, or, or 50 cents an episode, whatever whatever it may take. Um, you know, the more, the more we get to those, less we have to pursue advertising to try to support this endeavor. So with that, let's get into, well, first let's talk to Will. Um, so, Ex- Hello. Explain what you just did. What what you just uh, wrapped up with uh, over this past uh, month. <laughs> what did you do? What, what did you do? <laughs> Explain yourself. You made a mess. Uh, no, I didn't. I uh, I took a little break. I took a little time off away from uh, uh, certain social media avenues and uh, and podcasting. Um, I did no mayhem show for a month. Mm-hmm. I did uh, no panel riot for a month. I put up pre recorded episodes. Uh, and I severely limited my Facebook and Twitter interaction. Um, the idea behind that was that I would only log on for uh, Panel Riot promotion. Uh, it's a good thing I got this pop filter because there's a lot of peas in this week's uh, <laughs> in this week's talk. Um, uh, I would get on to promote Panel Riot, uh, promote the Sawtooth Willy videos that we've been doing, and uh, for Sketchbet. Sketchbet is a uh, uh, basically a drawing a day challenge that I'm uh, engaged in with some of my friends. Awesome. Awesome. So what did, um, how did it feel? Like, do you feel, I mean, you're still engaging a little bit, maybe popping enough and seeing what's going on. Uh, but did, what, what effect did it have on you? Well, uh, the way I described it at first, like within the first like week or week or two when people was like, how's it going? You know, um, basically the idea is if you've ever been in a room with a TV, uh, that's on, just constantly. It's just always, always on and you just tune it out. Or say you have a fan, like a box fan, and it's always on. And you get used to the noise, right? When you turn it off, you realize how quiet 
it actually is and how noisy it was before. That's how I describe my first couple of weeks away from Twitter and Facebook. Real quiet, but in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, after a while, uh, you know, I, I started to miss it. Um, it's a, it's a, it, obviously it's a great way to stay connected with people, with friends, engage in conversations and things like that. I would check in on Sketchbet and the, and the drawings that other people were doing and, and they would be having conversations and I'd be like, Oh, I should say, Oh, I can't, I can't do that. Um, so, you know, you, you do start to miss it after a while, but, um, I also found that I was filling my time with other things. Uh, Twitter and Facebook are great, uh, they're great time wasters. You know what I mean? Just kind of mindlessly refreshing, seeing if anybody has anything interesting to say. Um, and you get, you just kind of get caught in a loop, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, email, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, email down the line. Um, just killing time during the day. I didn't have that option anymore. So, uh, I did. And this is crazy because I forgot how much I like books. (laughs) I spent a lot of time reading actual books and comic books and, uh, reading comics, for the purpose of enjoying them and not for the purpose of reporting them on the internet Mm -hmm. and watching wrestling, uh, without having to, uh, formulate an opinion that would be interesting for a person to hear on the internet. Um, it was refreshing. And it also, I think it, um, it gave me a different approach to how I want to do those things in the future now that I've returned to it. Okay. Okay. So, so, um, and, and I, I've seen some other reports. There was actually a guy, I, I forget it was, it was The Verge or whatever was before The Verge that actually did a full year off the internet. But this was mm-hmm. off the internet completely. Right. And yeah. of course, you're not doing to that extent. Uh, do you think you could do a year out off the internet? Off the internet completely? Absolutely not. Well, it's, it's you know, kind of your job now, isn't it? It's, it is it is um, part of my job, uh, which I can't get into too much, but it is no, um, in the works. It is you know going to be part of my day-to-day job is engaging with social networks mm-hmm. and things like that. But even that aside, I mean, I pay, I pay all of my bills online. Mm-hmm. I do these shows. Um, I, I love the idea. The idea that infinite knowledge is in this little box, that never got old for me. So when I don't know something, I love to look it up and find out what it is. Even even in my Kindle, I love the feature where, oh, I don't really recognize this word. Boom, dictionary right there. So no, I don't think I could do an entire year. Okay. I did a week once, which was, it was okay. Mm-hmm. No, how about um, that's right. That's what I remember you doing before. Um, how about now, now? We just had a story uh, that we talked about over in J- Journal of Lifestyle Medicine that's going to be releasing uh, this week. Uh, it's over on the Facebook page um, about uh, from Wired.com talking about a social network that helps you with depression. So this got me thinking. Uh, if you don't mind, did this affect your mood at all in the past month? Did you see any kind of difference there? Um. Sort of, sort of, uh, it's, it's, um, the, they, they always say, don't read the comments. Well, I didn't have the option to read the comments essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, not having that negativity did help, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, on the flip side of that, it's, it's really hard to tell because it was winter and really oppressive, terrible winter in Pittsburgh. So mm-hmm. that, that didn't really help. So, um, I'd say it was a wash. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else like do you, you, you recommend people kind of cut off here for a little bit? I know, I know you and I, we both try to kind of disconnect uh, every once in a while if we have like a holiday weekend or something, right? Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to not, not worry about what's going on over there. And um, actually, if I'm being completely honest, the, uh, the, the idea came from uh, Justin Kanaki, who he's been on the show before, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he often almost annually will take a long periods of time away from social media. And I think, I think that's great. I think that's, um, that's commendable and it's a, a really, uh, great thing to do. I, I don't think I could do more than a month. Um, because when, when it got down to it, you know, I really, I really missed it. And the first thing I did on the day of, uh, when I could get back online was actually, I got really, really sick that day. So I woke up at like 4:35 in the morning and I got on Twitter and I posted things. Um, I will say it, it has changed, uh, the way I approach Twitter and the way I look at other people's tweets mm-hmm. because, uh, when I left, um, I would, uh, that's not a good way to start that sentence. Um, <laughs> Basically, when I get on Twitter now, I'm focused on 
uh, I want to be informed or I want to be entertained. Um, and when the things that I put out there, I either want to inform or entertain, mostly entertain because I don't have, you know, I don't have any secret knowledge for anyone. Sorry for if the cat brushes the microphone. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, big on hints and tips. So, uh, I, I, I feel like I feel even I have less, sorry, I have even less patience for people who just get online to complain. Mm -hmm. Or just ramble. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like have a point or be entertaining. You know what I mean? You're not just, you're not just yelling into a vacuum. There are people listening and I know it feels like you're yelling into a vacuum sometimes, but the vacuum starts to yell back if you have interesting things to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a little bit of that. Like, 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 take that extra second. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know how many tweets I've deleted. You know, I'm going to be like, ah, no, that's a little too pointed of a comment, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, so it's a, it's a, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. Uh, it's a it's a great forum. I've always found this. It's a great forum to fire off little like quick jokes and things like that. And if I get in the mood, I'll just write down a bunch of jokes and save them in my draft folder and kind of you know put them out whenever I see fit. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the one problem I've had a little bit with social media as of recent is I'm using it more to be informed and and less for the just to complain or listen to someone complain. And that, that I find that almost, it's almost like I either have to go through my follow list or do something because I feel like anytime I get on any of the social medias, it's just a long, it's either someone's long rant with a bunch of people commenting or it's a bunch of incessant crap that I have zero interest in. Mm -hmm. And by the time I get, like, I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, by the time you get to, like, the fourth screen, you're like, okay, and close. And why yeah. am I here, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, and, and, but I do see that, to, to your point, too, is, is I find myself more and more trying to catch up on the information side when – I'm trying to also catch up on TV as well as also trying to do something potentially for work. And I'm not focusing enough attention on one thing to do any of them all that well. So, mm -hmm. so that I, I agree. I would like to try to, to do what you did. I don't know if I could go a whole week, but I think setting certain hours of the day for me would definitely be beneficial. But also in reverse, setting certain hours of the day where I actually – focus on the social media aspect rather than trying to do everything simultaneously. Mm -hmm. right, right. I think, I think Twitter and Facebook and things like that, it's they're at their best when they're approached as either entertainment or a tool, something you can utilize when they become a crutch or a reflex. Uh, that's when it's time to kind of reevaluate your relationship with the network. You know, there's actually, where we're going through this, like, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm poking around it, as I do, kind of keeping an eye on the Twitter stream, see what's going on a, as we're doing the show and the chats and everything. And there's one that actually came across here uh, from 12 minutes ago from uh, Mike Montero. Montero. Um, he's the FU pay me guy I, I, I know him as. Um, he says, your calendar is your told, it's not your boss. And I think that that may also apply here to what we're talking about with the social media is your toll, it's not your boss, it's not your... You know, it, it, it shouldn't run your life, but it's it's something that you can pop into, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I know I know for me, you know, since a lot of my stuff is work with social media and I know LB or you maybe have a little bit too um, here, you know, it, it is like I don't know if it's just a different way to detach for us since it is something we are using to broadcast something we are passionate about like be it with the wrestling mayhem show be it these video projects that we've been doing um so like and it is the tool for that job and it is a social tool you know mm -hmm. um and an entertainment tool sometimes i guess so but yeah it's really kind of putting it in its place isn't it yeah yeah it's it's really put it all in perspective and uh, and like i said i i i'm reminded how much i love reading just reading just sitting down in quiet, not even with music, not with the TV on, not with something else going on at the same time, just sitting down and being able to focus and read. And it's, it's, it's great. I, I kind of lost sight of that somewhere along the way and I'm, you know, glad to get it back now. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else you want to impart before we uh, move on to our awesome things? Uh, 
uh, check me out, panelriot.com. We are back with new episodes now. <laughs> uh, you can find you can follow us on Twitter at Panel Riot, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, Internet Sensation Intern Stan is also available at Intern Stan. So <laughs> he just followed one of my other accounts today. I noticed, so he's getting Standing? around there. Yeah, yeah, I thought I saw that. He's I I he's completely unpredictable. I, you know, on one hand he, he picks really great theme songs and he, he keeps the podcast running smoothly. But on the other hand, uh, on the flip side, he's this worthless junkie who smokes pot in my bathroom, but everyone who comes on the show just loves him. They, they, they have the best, uh, best experiences with him. I don't, I don't get it, but, uh, glad to have him around. Heard the ladies are all about him. All right. With that, let's get into our awesome things of the week. Uh, Chilla, let's start with you you got something you got something over there actually don't so you? I, I do i do have something and i'm not 100 percent sure if i can show it on screen so real quick let's just say that by chance i had access early access to a samsung galaxy s6 um prior to release this is all, um, this is all hypothetical this is all hypothetical um and we can go with the uh a lot of this stuff has already been talked about um but I will say that hands down, the battery life is absolutely amazing. Um, mm-hmm. I am on day two, and keep in mind, I'm not a big phone talk person. Um, I'm sitting at 72% without a charge, and it didn't even get fully charged uh, yesterday. Um, the other thing is obviously running the newer version of Lollipop. I think it's running 502. Um, which after using it on my Galaxy Nexus 7 as well, um, Lollipop is definitely the way to go from a speed and memory issue um, point of view. The, the tweaks that Samsung has made to the phone, I am not a huge touch whiz um, person, but I will say they've tried to bring it back to the roots of Google and what, what they had envisioned for Android. Um, the one thing that I did find surprising is that the obviously the back doesn't come off no removable battery no ability to add storage um coming from the iphone world it's not a big deal for me um i know that dutters also did a review of i think it was a note 4 or one of the galaxy she had a larger galaxy type was it the one that she was um borrowing for a period there yeah, and yeah, I think, I think it was, was an the, S5. The Note 3 or Note 4 she got at Best Buy. I think she ended up giving it to her mom, maybe? Or taking... I can't remember what she ended up doing. I, I think she it, traded but, up to the um, iPhone 6. The, yeah, and, and, the cam- and it was due to camera lag. I will say mm-hmm. the camera on the device is extremely snappy. Uh, no mm-hmm. pun intended. Um, I actually prefer to use the Samsung Galaxy camera, um, which... Hold on one second. Oh. This away. is uh, this is excellent. This is very timely. Um, is this device? I'm actually trying to get my mom to upgrade right. her phone finally. So, <laughs> which is this device right here? So, if you're familiar with what a Samsung oh, right. device looks like, yeah, um, I think I've reviewed this on the show. Yeah, for um, the 21x the... optical zoom is phenomenal for pretty much everything you do. And the other thing is, it actually takes fairly really good pictures for a non-digital SLR type device. Um, no, no, that's a, it, it, for those on audio, what are you holding there? I mean, it, looks, it basically it looks like a camera. But yeah, it it's looks an, like a camera. It feels like a camera. It works like a camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's booting up right now. The difference is the device actually runs Android. Um, so it's a full touch screen back with your typical um, zoom, camera zoom on the front, uh, flash type device. Um, so coming from this device and being familiar at least with, you know, how Samsung works and their, their touch with UI and all that kind of stuff. Um, the galaxy device is not the new S six is not far off. I think where the S six makes the difference or, or at least for me, what made a difference is I'm a huge geek and I like the Avengers and they have, Mm -hmm. they now have built in theme capabilities and a theme store. So you can actually download an Avengers theme, which updates the background, the wallpaper, sounds, um, your icons, all that kind of stuff. So the, the, the other thing that I've noticed, and, and I actually asked someone with an S5 today if their device had it, um, the device has a built-in infrared on the top, and it actually comes with the Peel app. So you can actually quickly configure the device to control every media, console, anything that takes infrared in your house. Um, it also 
can tie into Antenna or any of the cable companies to tell you, you know, what's going to be on or what other people are watching, wow. and which I thought was interesting. And the cool thing is coming from I have the Logitech Harmony Link in the house in the um, living room, which allows you to control everything from your phone. So we don't have a con- we don't have remotes. We have our phones, and the Logitech knows what device is currently active, and you can quickly hit macro buttons um, to do different tasks. Um, the same type of thing kind of exists in the Peel app. The difference being is there's no extra device. Um, and a Peel actually has a setting where you can set it up by room. So obviously the Logitech links in my living room, the, all the TVs throughout the rest of the house um, are all have remotes unless I had a Logitech link in every room. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously with the, the, the Galaxy S6, you can take it with you. Um, so that makes it where you have a remote everywhere you go. Um, what could be interesting is, is then also anywhere you take it that has a TV, you could then end up program it, programming it to remote control that TV as well. Um, but all said, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really liking the device. I, I have to play around with some other stuff like the fingerprint sensor. Um, I, I haven't got a lot of time to play with and, and some of the, some of the other built in apps. Um, the one thing I will say, it is heavy on pre-install apps, um, like the Microsoft apps. We, we heard last week that Microsoft was partnering with a lot of Android companies to get their apps on the device. Um, that is that is true on this device, um, but I'm hearing that you can remove them, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, the one thing that I did find interesting is they segregated a lot of the apps into folders, so there's like a Microsoft apps folder. And I think it had Skype and something else in it, but Office was off on its own and not put into the folder. So I found that hmm. kind of confusing. Um, but I definitely think this is a step in the right direction, um, and it, it's just an overall phenomenal, phenomenal device. So, uh, so, for, so for Chachi listening and me and him saying that I'm all Apple all the time, um, this is yet another device that's that's beyond a lot a lot of. A lot of where other companies are mm-hmm. out with their devices. And, and from what you're showing me, you, you, you show a little bit before the show, um, that screen looks gorgeous. Even over, I'm seeing it over a webcam. <laughs> yeah. know, like, like it, it, looked, it looked pretty nice. It is crystal, crystal clear. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't loaded any videos on it just yet. I think I have six bucks in Google credit. So I think I'm going to maybe go. download a movie or something and, and play that on there. Plus I can throw Netflix and everything else on it. Nice, nice. The, the one thing I will say that I did do miss coming from other Android devices like the Galaxy camera. I did miss being able to take a micro SD card that had all my music and all my movies on it and just slide it right in. Um, that, that I've done that on a number of other Samsung devices as well as I think an LG device. Obviously the Nexus 7 being the tablet it is, I, I haven't loaded a lot of media on there. I use it more of just a leisure, casual scrolling the internet and, and watching stuff online. Whereas the other devices I've, I've gotten more in the habit, especially from the phone aspect, loading a ton of media. Like even my iPhone has, has a ton of movies on it. It has a, a bunch of a, a whole load of, of music that I actually have folders called um, it's called smartphone loadout. And it's just a folder where I put all my base music and all my base movies and I drag it to whatever device I'm using at the time. Nice, nice. And when is that available publicly for this everybody else? Friday. Can, this Friday. This Friday. Oh, so you can swing by the one store, pick up your Samsung X6, S6, and then swing by the other one and check out the Apple Watch. It, just keep in mind from the Apple Watch perspective, and I didn't put this in the show notes, um, but we can definitely speak to it real quick at this time. The Apple Watch goes on sale at midnight Pacific. 301 Eastern. 301 Eastern. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. Will the Apple Watch sell out <laughs> before you can get to the store to try it on? Because keep in mind then that that's just for a, for a try it on and check it out. Um, the device does not ship until the 20 is not available till the 24th. I um, mean, it'll probably ship obviously before that, but you'll get it on the 24th. And I saw a brief uh, leaked memo 
they claim that came from inside Apple where they're actually trying to deter lines outside of the store. And this is one way what? they're starting to really do that. They actually don't want lines. Well, then again, they've also had problems with people sitting in lines that are uh, not there for great reasons, you know, back marketing these things and everything. So I think they're trying to, uh, this is a different Apple. And, yeah. uh, they, and I, I think the other thing that I've seen that, that you know, people selling their spot in line. Right. Um, I don't. I don't think Apple's in the, that. That's Apple's intended goal. Right. Right. All right. Uh, you know, speaking of that, if anybody's getting the Apple Watch this weekend, we want to hear from you. Uh, hit us up on any of the social medias or anything. DM us or add us or, or something, because um, we want to figure out who's going to get one of these and 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 get their impressions of them. So I'm, uh, I'm actually gonna. I, I'm actually thinking about either waking up. Or here's a question: Does anyone know if you have gift cards, can you preload them? for use or do you have to punch them in one at a time when you buy something i know on itunes obviously you can preload your itunes account have to take a credit can you do that with apple because here's i i actually one of the things i got for christmas was gift cards knowing full well that i would probably be looking to get the apple watch my question is do i have to wake up at like <laughs> Two fifty-five. Don't expect. Don't expect this to work. Cards. Don't don't expect this to work, man. It's going to be the checkout process. It has to be in the checkout process. So, in, in, in how many case, gift cards you do you it, have? I have, I think, six. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but, but some some of them are twenty-five dollars. One of them's a hundred. I think there's a fifty-dollar one in there. Been, so they're all different. I think one of them was a fifteen-dollar one. I got in a grab bag. Um, have you been hoarding these for the watch? Yeah, because I didn't know how much it was going to be, and I'm like, I love well, I'm this. Spend I love this. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Oh, oh hey, so yeah, no. If you if you're if you're picking one up, uh, if you get it, you know, we want to get everybody's opinion that's potentially going to have it. I'm quite happy with Chilla's uh, Pebble that we traded up with. So you know, I'm cool. I'm cool. But My, I, I, uh, I'm. I'm currently planning on getting a, a basis peak, actually. That's right. Um, and let me tell you, I would absolutely 100% get an Apple Watch, uh, but I just cannot justify spending that much. I just can't do it. Maybe next week. You don't want to get 1.0 anyways. Uh, you're, 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 I, uh, LB, you're not, you're not a uh, early adopter like Chilla here. I mean, um, well, that's not, that's not uh, necessarily on purpose. No, uh, no, to no. Be fair. Uh, if I had the funds, I would be an early adopter as much as possible. <laughs> I got this. This was, I think, the first phone, uh, my iPhone six, mm -hmm. uh, that I was able to get on launch day, and I was very happy to do it. Um, but, uh, but no, generally, as I'm a victim of circumstance, not mm -hmm. an early adopter. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I, and, and looking at the peak here, for those curious, what it, what it is, uh, ultimate fitness and sleep tracker, according to the site, um, and, and it, it does most of the kind of smartwatchy kind of features too, right? Right. Yeah. Just, I think it's more bare bones for the smartwatch features. Just kind of like you can see when you have uh, messages, you can control your music. I think. Right. Right. Um, but my problem is I've struggled for quite a long time with uh, the, the the various Fitbits. Um, I had the one for a while, which was great, uh, except it wasn't you know a watch. And I do like I do like having the time you know readily available. Um, the one's just a little clip on, but it has the altimeter, which is nice because I, I run stairs occasionally. Um, I switched from that to the flex, I think it is, which is just the real simple band, but that doesn't have an altimeter and it doesn't have a, a readout for the time at all. So, um, the flex has everything I'm looking for. It's got the smartphone features, which are nice. It's, mm -hmm. Um, from everything I've read, it's like hyper accurate as far as, uh, fitness tracking, sleep tracking, uh, uh, and heart rate. Heart rate is a big one. That's why right. I didn't go with the Moto 360 is right. because it doesn't have heart rate tracking. Um, so this has everything I'm looking for, uh, at the right price. Hey, so. I, I, chill. I, I don't, I know I should probably just investigate this myself, but, but, but the, but the pebble, the original pebble, what does it do? Like it does steps and that's about it, right? It's far as i know yes okay so there was there's no heartbeat sensor there's there's no way of barometer altimeter anything mm -hmm. to measure anything like that the one thing that i have heard more and more people using though is the nike so obviously nike has the fuel band they also have the fitness app mm -hmm. um, the app can use built-in components in the phone that you can use in lieu of, and this is what I didn't right. understand, or maybe 
they don't play it up enough and they don't want to because it's pretty much giving you I actually used the Nike chip you put in your shoes. Mm-hmm. You had to have special Nike Nike shoes to, to actually that the that the chip fit inside of the sole of the shoe. The thing I liked about that is then you get a new pair of shoes, you just take it out and put it back in. It's the Nike Plus thing that used to be part of the iPod um, oh, yeah. touch, and I, right. the, the phones had it as well. Um, the, the, but, the, but their fitness app, when they stopped doing the Nike Plus stuff, they moved everything into the fitness app, and the fitness app is supposed to be able to do all of that at, right. I think, no cost. Right. Well I, well, I have a Fitbit app on my – I don't even use Fitbit. Actually, I use one called Moves that actually got bought by Facebook. That's why Facebook knows everywhere where I'm at now. Um, <laughs> and it, I like it because it gives me stats, but it also tells me where I've been and shows me okay you what you had activity for this this long and then you traveled you're in transit say i took the train or something for this long and it shows where i was um and that's and and i get my steps on there and it up, update hits me an update on this it all feeds into um uh the the apple health kit mm-hmm. situation and uh even the fitbit thing if you just want to be part of the fitbit thing if i want to share fitbit information with my wife i just boot up that app it's actually just all using the same information it's using the same chip in your in your iphone at least um and and, and to a point you don't really need a fitbit as long as you have your phone on you all the time so it's true i actually I did use the moves app for a long time before i had a fitbit and mm-hmm. i i really enjoyed it and then i can't remember if it was with the the update with the six or uh or an update with the app it could have been both but it just started just devouring my battery battery Ooh. life just just couldn't get enough and it was it was killing my phone so i uh that's when i switched over to the fitbit right right the one thing the, the one thing that i think that's going to be a, a something that i was looking forward to and i'm I'm hoping that somehow I can figure out how to make use of it um, is the sleep monitoring. I, it's the one thing that worries me about the the Apple watch 1.0 mm-hmm. is with 19 ish hours of battery life. Is it going to get me the sleep monitoring that I want? And if it's something where I, I Maybe when I get home from work, I have to plug it in and charge it for a little bit longer, or something along those lines, yes. or find some kind of find someone to trade some piece of old tech for their <laughs> their old Fitbit to to monitor sleep. It's one of the things I'm definitely interested in. Um, I don't know if it's maybe it's I'm getting older or having Christopher running around or whatever. I find that my sleep. At least that's my my guess is that my my problem is my actual sleep quality, not my sleep quantity, mm-hmm. and that's something that I definitely want to kind of measure. Certainly. Um, well, I'm checking in here. Uh, John says that uh, the app ate, ate the hell out of his uh, data. I'm not going to say that word, um, but uh, <laughs> interesting diversion we had here. Uh, but anyways, hey, we'll get back to more awesome things of the week. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, the Pittsburgh people providing pizza to podcasters. Um, you can check out their stuff at SliceOnBroadway.com. They're, of course, here in the South Hills. And if you can get find your way to Carnegie, I know the X is closed. Um, they're also on the main street down there on Carnegie PA. And, uh, the stuff is awesome. It, it seriously is guys. It's, it's fresh. It's, uh, it's, they have these gourmet pieces that are just killer stuff. Like, like the frisky billy goat and the, and the gonzo and the buffalo chicken is just amazing. Some of the best, bu- uh, buffalo chicken I think I've had, uh, in the area. Um, but, uh, go check them out. Slice on Broadway, uh, at under, PGH underscore slice on the Twitters. And they're also on Facebook and Instagram, Go follow any of those, get hungry, and go let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast. So let's get back to it. Awesome things of the week. LB, what's yours? Well, mine is a little app that was uh, kind of an answer to my prayers. It's called Play Moss. Play Moss. Uh, and it is available for iOS, and I am marginally sure it's available for Android as well. Yep. Um, basically, what Play Moss does is... Uh, you can make audio playlists out of uh, YouTube videos. Hmm. You can also pull from SoundCloud and I think a couple other places, but it was mainly YouTube that I was concerned with um, because there are like interview series. For instance, I'm a big fan of Paul F. Tompkins and his uh, 
speakeasy interview series. And uh, I like to listen to those while I work. Well, uh, they get suspicious if I'm just straight watching YouTube on my phone while I'm working at work. Now I can uh, create a playlist through PlayMoss, uh, load up the audio, and listen to it as I would anything else, the way I listen to my podcasts, my, uh, my music, anything like that, and uh, none's the wiser. Now, I can't believe that YouTube didn't do this sooner. Just make it where you could um, be able to turn off your phone, turn off the screen on your phone, and the audio still plays. But lo and behold, here's PlayMoss, and... Uh, it has become uh, in my main rotation of audio players while at work now. I use Downcast for podcasts, I use Spotify for music, and I use PlayMoss for everything else. It is available on Android. Yes, it is. Excellent. And I actually uh, just downloaded it. I want to check this out because there's a lot of like interviews I mm-hmm. like to listen to. Like I want to, I want to listen to more of the uh, the talks at Google stuff like that. Um, you know, some other lectures that are on there, which you really don't need the video for. I mean, it's just a, somebody talking. It's it's not that big of a deal, right? Um, right. Let's see. It's not letting me. Hold on. I guess I got. It, it doesn't. Does it? Ha- it doesn't have an offline capability, does it? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. But uh, I haven't. Um, I haven't really gotten too deep into the nuts and bolts of it yet. Um, one of the things I like to do is uh, there is like there's a, a couple of musical artists I follow on. Uh, on YouTube that aren't necessarily on Spotify or, or iTunes or whatever. And, um, uh, now I can listen to them, you know, throughout the week. Very cool. Uh, there's a violinist named, um, uh, Taylor Davis that everyone should check out immediately. She's wildly talented. Uh, we have featured her on panel riot a couple of times and, um, uh, she just recently launched on iTunes. Um, but uh, you can also listen to some of her covers on PlayMoss. So you can just straight up like does this search is basically searching YouTube at this point? Yes. Yeah. I think it, I think it searches. Um, let me bring up the app because I think it searches YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, and also something else. So I'm dropping a search in here for Ted to see kind of what maybe what it'll bring up here. And uh, well, that brings up some other stuff. Maybe I should have made a TED Talks. Well, there's a trailer for TED, so you can put that in there. Um, Ted pre-roll actually so yeah. if I, uh, I think it's I think it's early days in the app like you can search for playlists uh, or you can make your own playlists it's mm-hmm. still um, it's not the most intuitive app in the world no 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 but it, it actually looks great for being this early um, let's see little talks let's, yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, yeah I'm not finding like entirely the stuff that I want to uh, there's a there's Ted talks on SoundCloud I think there's a radio show actually perhaps vimeo no, vimeo is the other one youtube vimeo. vimeo and soundcloud okay so now here now we got oh i got a cat now and i do get the audio i do get the audio once cut out so i can completely just listen to it um this is not tedx veil this is just a kitten i don't i don't understand what's happening here <laughs> smart kitten talks to owner well, there you go. It's definitely YouTube underneath this. Because um, the first thing I get is a cat. <laughs> so cute, though. Um, anyways, uh, no, no, I, actually, this is, I'm, I'm probably going to poke around with this because I really like that. If I can throw, um, oh, thankfully, uh, like the Gary Vaynerchuk shows, right? Um, they're like 10 minute shows, and he's actually throwing those in a podcast feed, too. So you could listen to the audio there, but a lot don't, you know. Kevin mm-hmm. Rose's foundation is which is really just a forty-five minutes. It looks great, but it's really just two talking heads, um, and it's just not necessarily. Uh, TED Talks, shame the devil. Hmm. I'm getting like the uh, uh, under reaches of of YouTube apparently. Um, but no, check it out. It's uh, playmoss.com. That's M O S S. Um, you know, like the moss. Or just, like the, just like the best character from the IT crowd. Oh, yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. In related news, I also started rewatching the IT crowd. <laughs> Worth it. And it's short, you, so did, that did, makes sense. Do they have the final single episode they did posted anywhere? Not on Netflix, no. Not on Netflix, okay. It might be elsewhere, but uh, I don't know. So I'm going to reiterate one that I talked about actually this morning on the mini awesome cast that I, I'm pretty sure I gave the wrong date for. This was interesting, and I want to throw this concept at you guys. Um, so the smart boy that turns your iPhone 6 Plus into a working Game Boy. 
So this was posted and everybody thought, oh, it's a uh, April Fool's joke. Um, sort of. They posted on April Fool's to, as a sort of market testing. And now with everybody's response, they're saying, yeah, we're going to probably make this. It's by a company called Hyperkin. And it actually will attach to your iPhone. Um, and it actually takes Game Boy and Game Boy Color cartridges. And it will play them. You know, I imagine through some some app that they have. So not an emulator, per se, and actually playing the cartridges, which makes this really awesome. Um, That's great. It won't get shut down in a week. No, it won't get shut down in a week. And they can actually release an app on the store that's an emulator, technically, that would, should probably work with this. Or does it just kind of work when you plug it into uh, the device? So, I mean, it looks really cool. It looks like it's going to be pretty authentic from the looks of it. Um, and uh, I didn't have pricing or any information like that. But, uh, but, 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 but again, I really talked about this this morning, this idea of putting something out like this. Uh, uh, um, Think Geek does the same thing, where they put something out on April Fool's as kind of a joke. But something, a lot, like, obviously they had, like, a Steam console that was Steam-powered. Not the I, the OS, but they did they did run the OS too. But actually, by like a fire inside the console, like I don't think they're making that. But like stuff in the past, like the Tauntaun sleeping bag, right? Um, just goofy stuff that they're like, yeah, we can make that, and we'll get the licensing, and, and we're good to go. Um, yeah. What do you guys think about this more kind of progressive look at April Fools and and actually making something functional out of it? I I think it's a great idea. I guess the the one question I have about the the Game Boy cartridge emulator, not an emulator. You still need all the carts. Mm -hmm. um, my question would be is what, wh where does the cost come in, right? Because if I'm going to have to carry around this hunk of plastic that my phone slides into, mm -hmm. um, what, what's the cost differential for me going and buying an old Game Boy or an old Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance or whatever? The, the other thing that, that I have used emulators for um, is the fact that I can take, I don't need to carry 50 cart cartridges around for the games I want to play. Like I, they're all in a file format, right? Um, this is all for, this is all for an enthusiast. I don't think this is a common thing that people are going to be dumping into. You know what I mean? That I'm going to carry this like with me on the train every day to play Game Boy games. You know, um, this is a, this is kind of a, like, you know, why do you, what are you going to do when you have this arcade cabinet that you slide your iPad with? You know, what, what's the functionality of this? No, it's a cool thing. And if you're a collector or you're a video game enthusiast, like that's what you're going to kind of follow up on. I think. LB, you're you're a resident gamer here. What do you think of this? I think it's I think it's great. I think it's very cool. Um, but uh, I think it is um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna it's gonna play heavily on the um, the kind of gadgety factor. Yeah, you know, definitely. more than the more than the usefulness factor. Because like you said, what it doesn't really necessarily hold up to scrutiny when you're like, well, I could just go buy a Game Boy and carry that around with me. Game Boy Colors were teeny. Were they actually teeny tiny? I don't remember. They're, yeah, they're 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 pretty tiny. They're pretty okay. tiny. Yeah, they're very pretty small. Could yeah. be could be uh, misremembering, <laughs> but um, it's a, it's a thing. You're gonna get it. You're gonna put it on your phone and be like, "This is neat. It's neat. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna succeed based off of its neat factor." Mm -hmm. I think it's oh, yeah. not it's not necessarily solving anybody's problem. Yeah. No, I, no, even for a long time when I first had the, I used to have a 60 gig iPod, um, the iPod Color. It had the small screen, and I was actually – I started then carrying around a PSP so I could play games and whatnot. And then I got a bigger Sony memory card and started throwing my music on there. And, and that kind of was my first intro into the the mobile technology past the old school iPod. And then I moved on to an iPod Touch, and, and from there mm -hmm. it just went every which way. My point has always been – outside of work right um i have to have a multitude of devices for what i do but outside of that i want the silver bullet magic device that it's five inch screen and it's, it's ultra late and gets eight days of battery life and i can play every video game ever made on it and i know i can't do that in reality but I'm, i want to try to get down to that single device so for me 
this is a rough it's a it's a tough sell i'd rather right, right. carry no this is this is more for the gaming enthusiast this is for the one that's going to buy that retro con to play all their old cartridges without buying the you know because nintendo doesn't work so well anymore and i don't an, think that hasn't crossed my mind <laughs> oh no there's the, i still have my old nintendo and sega cartridges mm-hmm. you know i got plenty of them here i actually got a I have a bunch of Atari cartridges, and I'd love to have something that I can play those in because it does the one I have does not work so well with that old adapter. <laughs> yeah, that's, part, so. that's where I'm surprised that the on iOS and I know um, Android will actually I think let you use a PS4 controller because it's Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. iOS I actually have a small controller. I don't know how well you can see it. Oh, look at that little thing! Yeah, it's a that's probably a better view right there. Um, I mean, it has your um, left right there's the the bumper and the triggers it has x y a b like a like an xbox it has the two two thumbs mm-hmm. stick controller it, and it, it works great the, the the trick is is that whoever's writing the video game has to build in right and that's not, been a problem not just for this controller though it, it meets the made mfi standard so it's the same as every other controller that you could buy mm-hmm. the thing that surprises me is more companies don't build that into their app. Now, I, Angry Birds, you're definitely not going to need it, but things like um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic works great with it. Um, mm-hmm. But they have the, the, the forethought to put the controller scheme in there. Right, and that's also something adapted that needs something like that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sure the Grand Theft Audio games probably work pretty well with mm-hmm. it too. Anything with those yeah. kinds of ones. But also a lot of games, like we're looking like we've been talking a lot about WWE Immortals. It's a fighting game, but based on touch controls. You know, right. same with the, one, the more recent Marvel fighting game, too. Um, the Marvel fighting game is phenomenal. I play it every night. I'm completely I, addicted. But uh, that's the one that's one of the games where I wish they would give me the ability to use this mm-hmm. instead of having to constantly the, tap the Street Fighter games, the Street Fighter games that they have on there, which are tremendous. I have, a, I have several, but I haven't installed them for a while because I'm like, eh, I kind of like how I'm playing the the Immortals one. I'm very, I'm very excited for uh, Mortal Kombat X is going to have a version on iOS as well. Mm-hmm. That's that's based on what Injustice and uh, WWE Immortals has been doing because it's all Nether Realm. Anyway, but no, yeah, I think it's cool. I I, I think it's cool. It's, it, it is gimmicky, so you know, we'll see, we'll see. You know. Okay. On that note, um, let's see if there's anything real quick. Okay, I, I did want to touch on real quick. Uh, best of April Fools. Uh, it looks like you guys all all put put something in here, um, and I you know it's a, it was about a week away, a week ago. It, actually, a lot of these I found after April Fools because they're still filtering throughout the uh, throughout the uh, the web. And this one I actually found uh, via Uproxx via Facebook. And uh, this is a teacher that apparently had some fun in class, where he starts interacting with this video on his projector. To the point where, like, at, at one point he goes behind the screen and actually has him on the screen interacting, and the <laughs> other guy walks back off. It is a lot of it's a lot of fun to watch. This guy had a lot go into it, and, and you can tell it's just kind of a guy doing this because the uh, yeah, you see he threw the, one of the icons off, and, uh, and 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 something actually fell out of the screen. You know, um, but no. If you get a chance, it's, it's about a two minute video. We shared this on uh, on everything uh, uh, this week on on go check under the Facebook and you, you'll find it. Um, but it's uh, if you're looking it up, it's just a math teacher pulled a high tech April Fool's prank on his class and nailed it. Uh, really cool, really cool look at that. Um, what do you have, uh, LB? Well, here's the thing. I, I like April Fools. I do. It amuses me. I like seeing uh, when when you know companies get creative and they come up with something interesting, and, mm-hmm. and I like it. It's really good. But every now and then, something will happen that will uh, infuriate me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not this year, but last year, uh, I saw a site that said that uh, they had come to an agreement and Spider-Man was going to be in the Marvel universe. Now, since then, that has come to pass. But uh, back then, I was furious that that wasn't happening. Furious is the wrong word. I was mildly annoyed. Let's not get into hyperbole. I was a little annoyed. Uh, This year, however, I was straight up upset because the one that I saw – I don't even remember who this came from. It might have come from Google itself. Um, But uh, the idea is that Google Reader is (laughs) back. I, to this day, Google Re- – how long has Google Reader been dead? A couple it's years. been a while, right? Yeah, a couple of years. 
I still, to this day, I use Feedly. Feedly has become my Google Reader replacement. And I still think, ah, oh, you're not Google Reader. You're not as good. I wish I could do this uh, because I could do that on Google Reader and I can't do it on you, Feedly, you piece of crap. Uh, so uh, uh, someone said that Google Reader was back and it was you know, kind of updated for the new interface. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I dug through that story. I dug through it. I thought maybe they're wrong. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not an April Fool's joke. Maybe they made a mistake. Maybe this is real. Maybe, maybe it is actually coming back. Yeah, maybe it's a leak. <laughs> maybe something wonderful is happening, and I can return to uh, the 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 best reader. It's not it's April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. The material design pictures look great. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it looks great. Know. I'm sure it would be super functional and helpful and, <laughs> and useful if it came back. It's not Feedly. Still yeah. not Feedly. I find that Feedly is the nicest cross section between um, Flipboard and what Google Reader was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree because it's you can customize your views. Right. I I've got mine set up to be as close to Google Reader as I as possible, <laughs> just the way I had it set up before. I I get so pleased when I flip through and I have a section that's just everything that we do here at Sogatron Media, and it looks like I forget there's so much stuff in there that I forget it's all stuff we've made. Yeah. Like that's exciting for me. So, uh, Shilla, what was yours? I you were really excited about this one, and this is actually this is something that's for real, right? Well, it, it's it's kind of an April Fool's joke. It actually kind of works, um, and I, I definitely urge you to to play the video. and And they have the the video on the Verge article um, is the actual video also from Microsoft. Um, because if you listen to the voice and 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 the way that the presentation is, it definitely sounds like an an Apple type thing. Um, is it the same one. Welcome to MS DOS Mobile. Yeah, so um, so Microsoft released a Microsoft MS DOS command line <laughs> for Windows Phone, um, complete with a Windows three one interface. Come on, is this girl <laughs> even, is this girl even old enough to remember DOS? And, and, and an ASCII and an ASCII camera, <laughs> and and the camera actually has different modes that will kind of make the camera look like different, a very pixelated CG. I think it has a CGA you, mode. If you, you remember, you type camera.exe to bring up the camera. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like it's, <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I think they're about to show part of this. Uh, I mean, it, it, the, the fact that you can, it, it, like I said, it has the Windows 3.1 interface kind of mashed in there. It, it, there's a um, there's a there's an Easter egg with format C colon. And Cortana jumps in and saves the day. Mm -hmm. um, the color uses the old DOS command of offering different color formatting for the, for the command prompt. Um, it just brings back the the good old days of command line interfaces and sound blaster sound cards. <laughs> sound blaster. Oh, sound you, wait, blaster. wait, wait. Oh, do you have to God. sit your? Do you have to? Oh, you have to set your IRQ for your sound blaster. Oh no! Oh, the bad memories. Oh no! No. Oh, boy. Uh, full disclosure. The day that this happened, Sorg tweeted about it. Yes. And that's what Sorg does. Sorg, Sorg, you know, it's the morning. Sorg's tweeting text stories. That's cool. And I saw that. And I actually got a little excited because <laughs> I, I forgot it was April 1st. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe this means they'll release like Warcraft 1 for, uh, <laughs> for the phone. <laughs> dude, dude, if Windows Phone just straight up ran DOS games, <laughs> I mean, I'm all about this. Who isn't? Right, a lot, of, a lot of those are like they're like uh, abandonware now. You oh, can just yeah. they're just free. You, you just have them. You go to abandon that was like abandonware.com or something. You could download those and mm -hmm. just download them on your phone. And I don't know, it, it's got to have a place on your phone and say open with this and you command line IRQ yes. set. Make sure you, you make your to, boot floppy. 
you have to kind of get uh, because I for a while they they're starting to re-release these original LucasArts games. Yes. Um, but for a while you had to download this uh, special environment. I think it was called Scum or something like that. S C U M. DOS box maybe. So yeah, maybe it was DOS, DOS box. box was another uh, one. You yeah. had to download yeah. a special environment to run these files. Yeah. And I was, yeah, yeah. It was it was great to be the, honest. The, the it was biggest fantastic. The biggest issue is even if you just like because you could just install DOS on a modern computer, I believe. Right, it's mm -hmm. the same architecture for the most part. I don't know if you'd have problems with the 64-bit, maybe, um, but generally you could run DOS on a modern machine. The problem is a lot of these games, they don't have a CPU ceiling, so basically the game will run as fast as the CPU will allow it. And there, so I had an old. I started off on an old eight, um, 8080 or 8088. Like before the 286, right? It right, had 640 k right. of RAM. It, when it when it shipped, it had I think 128 k. And there was a, a a very basic video game which was in black and white and horrible graphics, but it was based on the original Die Hard movie. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> um, oh, wow! But it was like a 3D adventure, run around, shoot 'em up type game. Um, and I it, it ran horribly on that. On that old machine, I actually found the five and a quarter, um, probably fifteen years later, and tried to run it on like a four eighty six DX sixty six with like I think uh, eight mega RAM or something like that. And to your point, Sorg, um, if you had twenty minutes to, to finish the level, you had about two seconds. That's how quickly the timer counted oh, down wow. because yeah, it had no yeah. way to throttle it. Hold on, I, did I pull this out? Is sure. this your game? Yes, <laughs> but I had a CGA monitor, so the graphics were even worse. <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> because uh, I had a RoboCop 3D game um, that got in the CD pack. I had like Paperboy Two and stuff, and Paperboy Two was a problem. And then when we upgraded to like from the lowly 486 to like a Pentium and Pentium Two. Mm -hmm. Good luck, any of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Like RoboCop, just like you know, it was like a weird 3D ish thing. It wasn't Doom, but uh, it was interesting. But uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, we've geeked out enough, guys. Thank you for <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Will, for joining us. Uh, let us know, of course, panelriot.com, uh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com. New shows coming up at Panel Riot, and uh, a great part of the Sorgatron Media Network, doing some really, really cool stuff over there. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, we have some great stuff planned for the future. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, real quick, coming up, you can look for uh, Spring Pitch Fest uh, coming up April 18th, 16th. April 16th. Um, you can find more. Uh, that's a Google Doc. I don't have the address, but we'll be tweeting it here over the next few weeks. Tech Cocktail is April 30th, but I'll be busy because I'll be doing a how-to up in Wexford, PA um, on uh, doing a how-to video. And how to, I, we're doing a how to on how to make the how to video and how to post the how to video up there. You can find information on that over at Journal of Lifestyle Medicine.com. TEDx Pittsburgh, of course, is coming up on May 23rd. Create Fest uh, with the uh, Pittsburgh Technology Council uh, June 10th through 12th. That's alongside the Three Rivers uh, Arts Festival. And of course, our friend, uh, actually, this is this Saturday, isn't it? Um, yeah, Jagoff is going to be doing a comedy special based on his book. Um, so that's down at the Arcade Comedy Theater. If you're in town, please go check it out. You jagoff.com for more information on what's going on there. Um, is it the Arcade? Wait a minute. I think can, I, yep. can I plug one thing real quick? Oh, what's going on? Um, this, uh, this weekend is, um, oh, you, you know what? No, come back to me because I don't remember which one it is. Just, okay. I, I can, I can speak real quick. Um, if you remember our episodes back right around CES, um, it seems like everything that we heard about CES or in the weeks right after CES is all now available. Um, Intel's Compute Stick is That's now right. available for pre-order. Um, Samsung Galaxy S6 available this Friday. The Apple Watch available for pre-order this Friday. Um, there's a new Roku out, I think, with voice search that's also is available. So everything that we've talked about in the last uh, three months-ish um, you can now get it um, at, a, at a store or a website near you. Awesome. Awesome. LB, did you bring that around? Uh, there's a, okay. 
there is a comic book convention and it's coming to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Tara Reed's going to be there. She is. She's apparently going to be there. Uh, and I will be there Saturday. Okay. Um, I think. Signing autographs? I'm like 90% sure I'm going to be there on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be poking around. I'm going to be, uh, I might, um, if I can get a couple of interviews with some artists for Panel Riot. And if you see me, if you see this shining face, uh, uh, come up and say hello. We should have uh, Sawtooth Willie at the uh, Comic Con. That is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> just, just running around, biting people, throwing dead pigeon parts at everybody. Yes! Yes, <laughs> maybe we'll have to make some plans for a Pittsburgh Comic Con. When it comes through that'd be great mm-hmm. oh we should introduce sawtooth willie to the to the furries oh man <laughs> that'd be an amazing idea all right That's we got idea. the idea farm going guys so much stuff including hey uh dutter's playing with kittens at the uh cat show uh, that's up there on Sorgatron Media on the YouTube. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please uh, follow AwesomeCast starting at AwesomeCast.net. Um, on Twitter, Facebook, the Facebook group, we have a lot of conversation going and so much more. And uh, you know, I realize I didn't check on something for that. Um, but anyways, uh, you can also please drop a slide at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. And you can join us here uh, every Tuesday night around about here uh, at Live.AwesomeCast.net. Uh, thank you, LB, for joining us. At Chilla, at Chilla on the Twitters, at Panel Riot, at DJ Lunchbox, at Mayhem Show. And uh, thank you to our awesome uh, chat room that's been hopping all night long, including Wheels, including Juggalo John, uh, ch- chiming in on stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.